Hello everyone, coming up, what was it like to sit in on a BC court last week as a non-lawyer? COVID-19 has revealed existing gaps in elder care in Canada and created new ones. Ontario and the Colors of Down Syndrome and introducing our newest addition to the team. It's Wednesday, March 10th, and this is Quick Updates. Tabitha, you're wearing some bright colors today. What's that about? It's a great question, Colin. I'm wearing yellow and blue today because I'm going to be talking about Down Syndrome. Specifically, we have World Down Syndrome Day coming up on March 21st. And I want all of you to know about a very good bill that is before the Ontario Legislature. You see, a prenatal diagnosis of Down Syndrome often comes with a lot of negative information and sometimes even pressure to abort. Now, Sarah Singh, MPP Sarah Singh, she's put forward a bill that would have standard, positive, up-to-date, accurate information about Down syndrome given to every expecting parent who receives a di diagnosis, as well as, as instructions for the medical profession to just give the parents time to process the news. Now, this won't necessarily stop any abortions based on Down syndrome, but it will create a much more positive environment for parents getting that news that their child has Down syndrome. Now we know that every child is unique and created in the image of God, regardless of ability, uh, regardless of the number of chromosomes. And we wanna see that recognized for those children with Down syndrome. So write to your MPP today to support this bill. And let's see if we can get some support for this as we come up to World Down Syndrome Day. Thanks so much, Tabitha. It's wonderful to see good legislation like this being introduced. Now we had an addition to the team last week. Here's Daniel. Thanks, Colin. I'm Daniel Zackfeld, and I am a policy analyst for ARPA Canada. In my role, I will be primarily focusing on Ontario policy and looking into issues within the province. This will include research and writing, some lobbying, and various other forms of policy communication. So far, I've been able to start looking at a number of topics. Among other issues, for example, I've begun digging into conscience protection for physicians in Ontario so that healthcare professionals would not be forced to provide referrals for services they object to, such as assisted suicide. I'm really excited to be working with the ARPA team and seeking to bring a biblical perspective to policy issues, especially here in Ontario. Back to you, Colin. Thanks so much, Daniel. We're excited to have you join us. Sex Selective Abortion Bill C-233 will be considered in the House in April. Here's Elise with something you can do. You're probably wondering why I'm holding a gun. Well, did you know that last year, MP Michelle Rempel Garner had an e-petition for firearms that garnered over 230,000 signatures? Well, this year, MP Kathy Wagenthal has a bill called the Sex Selective Abortion Act, and it is scheduled to be debated mid-April. The e-petition for that bill only has about 3,000 signatures, and we'd like to see that number get up. Because as much as I care about firearms rights, I care about pre-born children way more. So will you help me by getting your friends, your family, your church to sign that e-petition? You can find more information about that here. Thanks so much. Thanks, Elise. Last week, we focused a lot on the BC case involving several reformed churches. Levi, we heard a lot about the legal perspective, but what was it like to sit in the courtroom as a non-lawyer? Hi, everyone. I've been getting the question a lot. What was it like being in the courts for the hearings last week? So I have a couple thoughts. One, they aren't actually all that exciting, these court hearings. It's lawyers providing complex arguments for hours on end, and actually, even though the court hearings take up the entire day, there's only about four hours of argument. The, they take lots of breaks for the lawyers to freshen up, for the judge to process things. So each day, there's only about four hours of argument. There also was uh, limited capacity in the courtroom, so not everyone who wanted there could watch. So I had to arrive an hour early to make sure I got a seat. There was always protests going on outside. There were some going on around this case, about the uh, Huawei executive case, and about the Trans Mountain Pipeline. So it was always a buzz of activity up at the Supreme Court. So that's what it was like being at the Hill at the court last week. And so hopefully that answers some of your questions. Back to you, Colin. Thanks so much, Levi. COVID-19 has revealed existing gaps in elder care in Canada and also created new ones. Join Levi, Minderhout, and Anna Nienheis as they discuss the Canadian elder care context, lay out a biblical perspective on elder care, and explain how to engage in advocacy on this issue as a Christian. Go to arpacanada.ca to register for that webinar. 
Finally, in an action item we sent last night, we told you that Bill C-7 will likely be forced to a vote today. Please pray that this bill would not pass and that the voices that have grown in opposition to this legislation would be heard. If you missed the call to action, you can head over to arpacanada.ca slash C-7 to join it. That's it for quick updates this week. Thanks to you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>